Hello. Well, today I'm going to <clears throat> give my thoughts on Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Um, as I've said before, I'm not fond of the way this trilogy has gone. I know in the first videos I made with The Force Awakens, it was fairly positive, but I really wasn't feeling it. I really didn't feel very enthusiastic as I wanted to. I sort of put on a face of, yeah, it's good, and convinced myself for a while before later, uh, which I then made a video about the various critiques and criticisms that the film has gotten, had gotten at that point, which I actually agreed with, uh, really, when I finally decided I didn't like it, or at least I was able to admit to myself I didn't like it, because I really always did, it's just I took a while, because, uh, you know, as I've already expressed, I've, I enjoy the first six movies, um, uh, and I want to say again, if you like any of these new movies, that is great, that's fine. Um, I myself don't. I'm not fond of them. I, you know, but that's me. That's my uh, uh, thoughts on it. That's my opinion. So if you like The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi, that's, that's great. You know, glad you like them. Um. I've also illustrated my thoughts with The Last Jedi already fairly well. And uh, I'm going to do my best to ensure my thoughts here are not... Don't go on for like an hour like the other videos. I don't know. I, I'm trying to do the best I can to keep things under a certain amount of time while being as as thorough as I can. And yet, I don't know... I, I guess this will be a spoilers uh, video. So, but I, I will overall just give you what my thoughts on the movie are before I get into the spoilers. So, for that portion of it, um, The Rise of Skywalker, I thought, I'm not very, um, <clears throat> I'm not very fond of this movie. Um, I will say uh, I do uh, think it's more entertaining uh, when it comes to the action, but that's also a negative, I find, because the action is so fast-paced, it bogs the story down, especially when like the first 50 minutes is to give explanation to certain things we should have gotten in the previous installments of this trilogy. Things have to be explained so that the end of this trilogy is able to wrap up in, in a way, wrap up in a way that's supposed to be very satisfying and feel good at the end of it. Um, so positive is I, I like the action, but that's also a negative. Uh, so... Yeah, I also sort of like how the characters interact, <clears throat> like all the good guys, like Ray, Poe, Finn, all of them, you know, they interact quite well, but the problem is we've never seen that development happen. They've just interacted before, and there's quite a bit of dialogue, sort of cringy dialogue I found in the previous movies, and not so much here, but it's just, it seems a bit odd, I would say. Um, Carrie Fisher is in this movie, but her presence is very awkward because they filmed brand new scenes when all of her scenes were cut from The Force Awakens. So, I don't know, I guess filmed brand new stuff, but then were able to insert Carrie Fisher here. So everyone was talking to, I guess, nothing or maybe something where a marker for where, I guess, Carrie Fisher was would be more likely, like until we see behind the scenes on how that was accomplished. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, yeah. And Luke Skywalker is in it, and 
he doesn't have a whole lot to do with, uh, despite... Uh, he, he he comes in at later in the movie, and um, I think Mark Hamill gave a fine performance. But again, there wasn't a whole lot for the character to do, so he was just sort of essentially there, sort of give advice to Ray, kind of, and then uh, give her something, which I will get into a bit later. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, so there you go. In short, I think on an entertainment level, this is the best uh, due to the action. I think the action was done a bit better than the other movies. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm just not very quite fond of this film overall. So um, with all that, I will now get into the spoiler section where I can really get into why I'm not overtly fond of this movie. Um, well, first off, Palpatine's in it, as everybody knows, but it makes no sense because he was obliterated and he, from the Death Star, and also the Death Star from Return of the Jedi has pieces on Endor, which I'm quite confused about because when you watch the end of that movie, it explodes and is like vaporized. There's essentially nothing left, and if anything were to f go onto the planet of Endor or the moons of Endor, because you know where they were, you know technically that's the forest moon of Endor. I only, I only want to clarify just so people in the comments don't say, "Oh, it's the forest moon of Endor." You know, it's not actually Endor. Well, okay, there's a forest moon and there's Endor, and you know all that stuff, but, it, you know, it makes no sense how he's alive. They don't really even explain it. It's never explained in the movie. Uh, he just says, like, he's just alive, pretty much, and I'm like, what? I don't know. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense, but I guess you're supposed to have a suspension of disbelief, but when this trilogy is supposed to be a continuation from New Return of the Jedi, which I've already, I think it illustrated quite well. I think this that was a great ending to the Star Wars saga, uh, chronologically from the prequels to the original trilogy. That was a great definitive end. Here is supposed to be the apparently true end. That just came out of nowhere. Him being alive and they don't explain it. I'm just like, I guess maybe the writers and stuff and other people behind the scenes will explain it later, but the fact is, in the movie, it's not explained. Um, and if there was a scene that explained it, it is not in the movie. They cut it out, uh, I guess, for time. Um, <clears throat> they also, uh, maybe it's in a book somewhere. But I think if you have to explain certain things like that, that's important in a movie. Uh, that's a failure on the film's part for either not including a scene of such that is important to understand how this is all, this makes sense to the story, not just of the movie, but of the entire trilogy. Um, you know, I'm not even necessarily taking, talking about a deleted scene. I mean, because at least on that, and it's like, well, okay, they did film a scene like that. It was already written. The problem is they uh, cut it out, which was, which is a problem, but Okay, I guess they made a scene. Uh, but if it's in a book somewhere and they have to explain it, that's, I think that's just a failure on the film's part because they couldn't explain it in the movie. Um, and also, even beforehand, he was essentially um, obliterated anyway from the reactor. You see, when he hits like the reactor, this blue uh, wave of not necessarily a wave, but like force or whatever, with the lightning Sh sort of shoot up after he's gone. And yeah, I I was just like, what? Whatever. And he's also hooked up to these things, tubes and machines and stuff. I'm like, what? what? And also, he wants Kylo to kill Ray, but then later. 
he wants Ray to kill him, and then he'll go into her, and the Siths will live inside her. And I'm like, what? Uh, his plan doesn't make sense. He wants her dead, but then he doesn't want her dead. And then also, um... Here's just, uh, another spoiler for you. Obviously, this is a spoil spoiler section, but uh, Ray's a Palpatine. So he wants his own... He's she's his granddaughter. He had a son at some point. Okay, I didn't know he had a girlfriend or got married or anything, but as far as I know, there's never been anything like books related, both canon and not canon. Because, uh, you know, there's that old EU where there's anything where Palpatine ever had a girlfriend or any significant other where a child at any point could commence, or, you know, come out uh, with him, uh, uh, being the father, uh, it just, I don't know, and uh, a clone or whatever, I don't know, I know there was a clone uh, of Palpatine at one point in the old EU, but people really weren't fond of that, thought that was lazy, I don't think that's the thing here, I don't think that's the situation, what it is, it's just, uh, Blah. That's what it is. It's blah. It doesn't make sense because uh, it's never explained in the movie. And if it was, at some point, it got cut out. So, you know, maybe there is a scene. I don't know. But uh, overall, this that just doesn't make sense because even George Lucas said he was dead. Though, of course, they're not listening to George Lucas anymore, so what do they care? Anyway, that topic aside... Um, how they go and find Palpatine. They need something like a holocron, a Sith holocron, but they need the Sith holocron to find the holocron or something, and then they can find where Palpatine is. Like Ray, Poe, Finn, and all of them. It's like, what? Or something. It was just weird and odd. They need this to find that, and once they... Because, like, they need a knife. They have this dagger. Okay. Here it is. But then they can't... Uh, that's really what it is. They need this to find this so they can go and find Palpatine or whatever. And I'm like... What? This is just so... This is just so very convoluted and very... Uh, just to try and make sense of Palpatine being alive again. That's a, a quite a big thing here. Um, uh, Billy D. Williams is there, and he's as Lando. He does a good job, but I don't, I don't know. It's like they just don't utilize the character uh, very well, uh, in my opinion. He's there to help help the main characters uh, at some point, like in the middle of the film, but then shows up at the end on um, the Falcon. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's just so many things happen for the sake of a plot. And that's another problem I have. Um, I read some stuff down here. I'm like, you know, a lot of things have to be explained in the first 50 minutes or so because he didn't provide a lot of, you know, all that, like, like her raised lineage. It felt rushed to end the trilogy, since the previous installments didn't pad the story of the trilogy. Well, they didn't pad it out well, which is true. Uh, and there's a lot of action movies, so in a way it's inter more entertaining in that regard. It feels rushed. you know. So what's seen as a positive is also going to be a negative. Um, Palpatine being alive defeats the entire purpose, really, of Luke and Anakin in Return of the Jedi. Anakin is thrown down the reactor, you know, Anakin's story is now meaningless, essentially. His accomplishment of fulfilling his destiny and also saving his son, uh, who could have killed Palpatine, but decided not to. He was going to be a true Jedi and not do it. He was going to die. Vader, uh, at that moment, essentially is dead. Anakin is reborn, picks up Palpatine throws him down the reactor, and then he dies, and he sacrifices his, himself for his son's 
so his son doesn't die. All of that with this movie, it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Also, Palpatine has such strong powers now. He's able to essentially give uh, like old Star Destroyers and stuff, <clears throat> lift them up in the air. I guess, I guess built new ones or something, and able to use the Force and like lift them up or something. Because I don't, I don't recall uh, them ever uh, being, you know. Uh, manned at that point in the beginning of the film when we see Palpatine and him doing that. He's like, I'll give you a fleet. He says to Kylo, because you know, he says to Kylo he wants him to kill Rey. And it's just, you know, yeah. I just, uh, I'm just, it doesn't, a lot of, it doesn't really make too much sense. It's just, a lot of things happen just for the just so it can happen the way it does in the movie, so it tries to make sense of things. Um, uh, what else did I say? Yeah. Pacing felt off. Like, uh, you know, I didn't really care about the new characters in this trilogy, and even some of them are introduced here. I just didn't care. Um, you know, and Leia's, again, her, her scene, Leia's scenes were unnecessary. You know, they stood out in a bad way. Uh, things just seemed off there. I think Luke should have been the one, because we see Rey also train in this film. Something we hadn't really seen her do before. I mean, she goes to Nate to try and learn from Luke, but he doesn't really want to help. You know, teach her three lessons and that's it. Just trains her, teaches her two, and then doesn't really uh, teach her anything else. So, there's that. I think if he was, as a Force ghost, teaching her the way of the Force and how to be a Jedi and everything, that would have worked better, I think. And then maybe, at the end, hear Leia's voice. Because you hear Jedi voices at the very end of the film. Aiden Christensen returns as Anakin... Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, the Guinness as Obi-Wan also. They use that Ray thing they did in Force Awakens. Uh, they use uh, Samuel L. Jackson returns uh, Frank Oz. Um, yeah, the, and Ahsoka. <clears throat> Her voice is there. It's just they so the various Jedi talk to Ray at the end of the movie. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just, like, th this movie really seemed to be a rush, to me, a rush to end it all. Seemed to be, seemed to want to be over as fast as it began, and I think that's bad. Uh, now, you know, might not have been Abrams' is, you know, thought about making the movie, but that's just how it feels with this cut of the movie. Uh, or I saw somebody say that if this was a bit longer... Maybe there was a half an hour or more to this movie or so. It would have made a bit more sense. Maybe the padding would not have felt rushed. Which, I can kind of agree. Uh, I'm not saying that the, if this was a half an hour or more, or maybe even an hour longer. As I also suggested, it would have been better. Exactly, but it would have been more... Ex it would have explained a lot more things. It would have been a lot more clear. You wouldn't be confused and be rushed to the end and yeah and um we also see luke uh, show uh, ray her lights uh, leia's lightsaber uh because she goes back to, to she also steals kylo ren's tie fighter uh they fighting on debris of uh, <laughs> fighting on debris of the uh, death star 2 and in doing so She she stabs Kylo, but then force heals him. And also, earlier we see uh, her force heal this serpent thing. And I know some people are making a deal of that. Um, 
Now, in the old canon, that was a thing. You know, force healing was a thing. But it took a lot of more training with the force and everything, so you could heal anyone else. You know, and people were like, well, Ray can do that because she just can, you know. She just is able to do everything good and better than everyone else. That's sort of a thing in, anymore at this point with uh, people with that criticism, which... I don't know, at this point, it's like, you know, if you didn't think that before, might as well now. Even with that training that we see her have in the beginning, why not? She also has the ancient Jedi texts from Luke, uh, who, where she had, apparently. Uh, he didn't, uh, even though it seemed like in The Last Jedi, things were destroyed thanks to Yoda with lightning. But whatever, uh... J.J. Abrams seems to want to be, fix the Last Jedi in a way. He, while not ignoring it, but fix some of the problems people had with it. Uh, it doesn't fix all of the problems people had, but tries to fix enough so you are. It just fits with this movie and it can end. It tries to fix complaints, which is also another problem. Either instead of ignoring it altogether, or just doing this trilogy on his own, he has to spend a, con a considerable amount of time explaining things that were not explained in the previous movie. Because any of the plans he had at one point laid out for this trilogy were discarded by Ryan Johnson. Now he has to sort of salvage what he can to try and conclude this trilogy. Should have just done this from the very beginning. He should have been the only one to make this trilogy. Um, maybe things would have been better. I don't know for the fact that it would have been, but you know, I don't know. Maybe it would have always been bad. Maybe the eighth installment of what J.J. Abrams was going to make was going to be bad too. Couldn't, might have never been able to be, avoid that, but whatever. Um, so she goes to, so I have to explain all that, you know, she has all this stuff, she's able to use the force incredibly well, healing everybody and stuff that she can, and, um, we see Han Solo again, you know, through a vision, like through, in Kylo Ren's mind, he sees his dad, and he doesn't really want to, you know, do this anymore, he doesn't want to be bad anymore. Wants to stop, but he can't go after Ray because at this moment, because well, <laughs> she took his Tie Fighter, so and she crash lands it, or maybe not crash lands it, but she sets it on fire and is throwing things into it, and she's gonna throw the lightsaber, and then Luke shows up for the first time in the whole movie and he grabs it, which is a problem I have because. He's a ghost. Why would a ghost be able to physically grab a hold of something? That doesn't really make sense. Um, honestly. You know, a being able to put their arms on other ghosts or something, or even on person, but the person couldn't feel it, really. Probably just go through them. Uh, but they can't really hold animate objects. Couldn't hold a lightsaber. Would have been better if he just used the force and stopped and then appeared before Ray. And he explains how this was this the Jedi is an important weapon to the Jedi. Yeah, the lightsaber is an important weapon to the Jedi. But I'm trying to get through this I, I made a little bunch of notes here and I want to try and get through them as much as possible and try to keep this condensed. I don't want this to be an hour. As I've said already, but Anyway, he, and that is a, seems to be what many see as a slap to Ryan Johnson, because he, the first thing that you see Luke do with the lightsaber, throws it behind him, walks away, and then she grabs it and saying, go away, you know, he's, as Mark Hamill said, he's like, you grumpy old man, you know, get off my lawn, uh, here though, he's different. And, uh, you know, and, uh, on one hand, it's nice to that Luke is saying things like that, that 
the lightsaber is an important weapon to a Jedi, and yet the previous movie he tossed it behind him. But in a way, it's sort of funny again to just see that sort of being retconned. Um, so there is that. Um, yeah, you know, Palpatine. You know, I covered that very well. Um, yeah, I just. Oh, and the end, um, the ending. So, they, uh, fleet, uh, they have for the rest is resistance or anything. They have this new, uh, villain, who I don't know, I can't recall his name. Whatever, it's, I don't know. Just some new guy who's there, he's bad. He also kills Hux. Because Hux also was uh, a mole, essentially, and giving them information about the first, first Order. And he goes, like, I don't care if you win. I just want, you know, Kylo Ren. Uh, he wants him to, like, destroy. He wants him da taken down. He doesn't care if the First Order wins or loses or if the Resistance wins or loses. He just wants Kylo Ren taken down. That's all he cares about, so there you go. And, uh, um, yeah. It's, that's something that happens. <laughs> you know, a lot of things happen in this movie. Uh, uh, some say just for convenience. Um, I don't know if that would be, I would say that exactly, though I can definitely see the point of saying that back why you would say that um i just uh with these this ending you know a lot of the fighters and ships fighting the tie fighters and everything uh trying to destroy these star destroyers and stuff you know where palpatine is uh, all of that it just seems like they're trying to do so much to try and have a big epic fight similar to Return of the Jedi. Because, you know, like the previous movies, you know, this has many elements with Return of the Jedi. Um, but I think in, a, in many ways there are more uh, other beats that are not exactly Return of the Jedi-like. You know, there are some stuff that tries to be its own thing, but, you know, whether that succeeds or fails... Well, that really depends on you as the viewer. It really depends on what you think. Do you, uh, you know, if you agree with that or not, I don't know. Because I'm not you. Uh, I just... I don't know. I... Palpatine, like, sucks the life force out of Rey and Kylo. Because Kylo, at that point, you know, Rey's doesn't want to, you know, she wants to save her, but she doesn't want to kill Palpatine because uh, she does that, you know, because she's full of anger, which is what the Sith, you know, is filled with. So she will fall to the dark side and become the Empress. She doesn't want that. And yet she also is like, I want to save my friends, and the only way to do it is to kill her, him, but then all the Sith will be in her. And, um, you know, Kylo Ren shows up, but he's elsewhere. It was also the Knights of Ren, which were something mentioned in uh, Force Awakens, but nothing came of them. See them in a few scenes, and then they all fight, you know, uh, Kylo Ren. And then there's also this Force... Uh, there's this Force thing where you're able to give things to people. Like, he's able... I like can't... As a way to find out where uh, Ray is at one point during their force communication, he's able to rip something off of her that she was given, and they track where that is, which is planet that sand planet that is in Tatooine, uh, you know. But um, and you're able to see uh, how that happens, which is I don't know how I think of that honestly. We saw a brief that briefly in uh, uh, the Last Jedi, but 
you know, before it was really like the most that happened was, you know, I'm able to, uh, I got, you know, she was where it was raining and stuff. She goes to like reach out her hand and then ready to touch it and grab his hand. But then <clears throat> it was wet. So I don't know. It's weird. Here he's grabbing, th he grabs something from her and then he finds out where she was on another planet, which is a star destroyer above the city they're at. And then, um, yeah, he's able to grab a lightsaber. from from her she passes it to him and then he's able to kill the knights of ren and then they're gonna you know she has like a leia's lightsaber he has luke and anakin's they're gonna fight them but he like a, a palpatine and then palpatine electrocutes them and then he's like taking their life force away all while the resistance is uh fighting and getting destroyed um and just before the resistance is completely destroyed, here comes Han with a whole bunch, or not Han, Lando. I, I've said Han because he's in the Falcon, with you know, and here they come, and they have this huge fleet, like a lot of ships from, <laughs> like Return of the Jedi, and this huge big epic fight continues, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and uh, as that goes on, uh, they're pretty almost like dead or whatever. But then, you know, he, uh, uh, Ray gets up, and uh, oh, Kyle gets up and looks at Ray, who's like dead. And then he goes and you know, force heals her, and then he's pushed away, and then. Uh, Palpatine goes to electrocute Ray. She gets a lightsaber, he's blocking it, but then she gets the other lightsaber and he goes like, oh, like all the, uh, all of the Sith are in me. And she says, all the Jedi are in me. You know, and that's also earlier what I said. All the, the Jedi's are talking to her, and also Luke included. He's giving her in words of encouragement. Also, all this happens, uh, or things like, you know, you see. Uh, Leia, she's, uh, she also helped Ray earlier regarding, uh, helping to, I guess, healing Kylo, I guess, I think. And then later, she sort of lays down, like, on a bed, and, um, you know, as, uh, and it's like she, to help Ray and give her the strength and everything. She sort of becomes one with a force so she can be strong. So in a way, she's helping also with Rey in order to destroy Palpatine. And, um, you know, it's... It's, yeah, it's, it's... It's just so much happens in this movie that it's sort of even hard to even talk about because it's like... You might think I'm being quite sporadic, but I'm trying to be as linear as I can. Yet, talking about this even with the notes I have, it's sort of hard because it's like you know, it's like you forget something that happened. That you say something. Well, also here, here's this that happened earlier in the movie. I'm trying to have to go back and forth, even if I lay out something like this with notes, it gets difficult with this film. And that's another big problem, you know. It just, it's its not very well paced. Again, it's fast paced. So much happens that you're trying to keep your mind on it. And you're trying to absorb this and take it in. And it can kind of get hard doing so. And, um, yeah. So, eventually, Ray kills Alpatine by... You know, deflecting with both lightsabers, uh, his lightning into him, sort of like what Mace Windu was doing, which is how he became really the formed the way he was. You saw him in like the 
original trilogy, Return of the Jedi. Um, but then, so that, he's gone. And, uh, uh, and then she falls down and, like, dies, essentially. You know. Oh, no, Kylo doesn't give her his life force at that moment, or the healer or anything. He, what he does is, early before he gets pushed back, he stands up to sort of, like, help. He's gonna take on Palpatine, but then he gets pushed backwards, forced pushed backwards by Palpatine, and then, and then Rey, you know, thanks to the, everyone with the Force, you know, she gets up and takes him down. You know, he, Kylo then goes after Palpatine's dead, he goes to, he heals her and he gives her, you know, he's able to give her uh, enough life, and then they kiss, and then after that, he dies. And then he, like, is one with the Force and disappears. You know, and, um, and maybe at that point, uh, Leia also disappears also to the Force. I can't recall at the moment. It's just I've taken this weekend uh, to try and absorb everything I've seen with this movie. And I'm still unable to truly absorb it. That's just how this movie is. It's so fast-paced. It is, there's so much they have to shove into this movie and they don't pad it out well because this trilogy has not padded its story out well. It's just so, like, J.J. Abrams, here's a mystery box and here's a mystery box. He has a whole bunch of mystery boxes in his movie. And then Ryan Johnson decides, I'm not going to answer those. And then if he does... Oh, it, it, it was a meaningless thing. It, it, it was stupid. Don't even bother. And then he tries to get it, and then now J.J. Abrams tries to give meaning to all this stuff, and it's just like, it just doesn't feel right. It's convoluted, I think, in terms of the plot. You know, trying to do things just to try and make sense of it, since his plans were not, for this trilogy, were not really implemented in episode eight so at the end you know the resistance wins you know they destroy the empire or or i'm sorry the first order they're not the empire and they're not the rebels you know even though they pretty much are uh but you know that's just whatever don't 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 think about that don't think about it too much and uh at the end uh she uh, also uh, Ray used Luke's X-wing because that was something else that Luke gave her. He gave her his X-wing, which had been in the water, as we saw in the Last Jedi, for who knows how long. He was there and been running since he arrived to uh, the planet um, Octu, I believe. He hadn't been, he hadn't flown it or anything, but he uses the Force, so it's. You know, it's comes out, and then she's able to use it. She has his helmet on too, which really looks quite big on it. Honestly, it looks a bit big. Like they probably should never have. <laughs> they should have given her either. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe she shouldn't have even had a helmet on. It just didn't. It didn't look. It looked too big. You know, and it's just, just, that's how she got there, because she destroyed the TIE Fighter. I forgot to mention that. I apologize. I'm going back now. Uh, it's, but she goes to Tatooine at the end, and she also now has her own lightsaber, which is, like, orange. All right, but she goes down to um, Tatooine and goes where Luke used to live with his aunt and uncle, which is a place where which has been abandoned and hasn't been lived in for a long time. And she goes and takes Luke Anakin's lightsaber and Leia's lightsaber and she wraps it and ties it up with the Force. And then she goes and buries it in the sand with the Force. And then like that's like her their, their resting place, essentially. That's where they're honored. And in the end, uh, some this old woman 
you know, uh, says like how nobody has lived here for a long time. Oh, and like, and who are you? And she says, I'm, I'm Ray. You know, and you know, Ray's a Palpatine now. You know, but and then she says, what, Ray, what? And then the Force ghosts of Luke and Leia are there, watching her. Uh, you, uh, some thought we're gonna see Anakin and. You know, Hayden Christensen, and uh, going to see <clears throat> Obi-Wan, maybe, and other Jedi as forest ghosts. But we should see, um, you know, Luke and Leia. We don't even see uh, Ben Solo. You know, he's gone at that point. He's just gone. Uh, I guess he is one with the Force now. But just not a force ghost yet. So she looks over at the force ghost of Luke and Leia. And she looks back to the woman. Smiles and says, Ray Skywalker. And then she and BB-8 watch the two sunsets uh, set. And the movie ends. And, um, yeah. Um, there are people who say this is the worst Star Wars movie. Because it destroys the, like, the importance of the sacrifice uh, that Anakin made, as well as Luke. You know, the accomplishments Luke did in the original trilogy. With this trilogy and how this ends, uh, essentially were for nothing. Uh, they didn't accomplish anything. Neither did Leia or Han or the heroes before. They didn't accomplish anything, really. And um, I completely understand that. And yet, from an entertainment level, I think this I had a lot more enjoyment out of it. So, there's that for me. Uh, I think I'm going to end it here. I'm sorry that this, you know, this just doesn't, you know, if this doesn't, is a, is a bit too sporadic. I try to write these notes and organize them in a way that made sense but I don't know there's just so much that went on that uh, even my mind just is trying to catch up yeah, even after taking the weekend to absorb what I've seen um, I'm not sh and I don't think that's what this movie was supposed to accomplish it's not like one of those a mind-bending film that is supposed to make you feel this way you know Star Wars isn't supposed to make you feel feel this way, make you think like this, and be sporadic, and this, that happens, oh, no. oh also literally in this movie, that happened, you know, I, like, you forget things, not that I forgot anything, but I forgot to mention them in, like, a chronological order of run, of the rundown, uh, so, for that, I, I apologize, but, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm not fond of this movie, but I just wanted to give my thoughts, give it out to you as fresh as possible after sitting on it for a while. Because I wanted to make sure I had my thoughts collected. And I do think this is the most entertaining film of this trilogy. But again, the entertainment really came from the action, which bogged down the story because the story has to tell so much in a certain amount of time. First, like, 50 minutes, have to tell a lot of things, like the lineage of Rey, because couldn't do that in 8, or even 7. We couldn't do it from even the get-go. That has to be a mystery. Uh, uh, and the payoff was... Eh, it wasn't good, really. Uh, I didn't think. You know, maybe there's others who like this. Maybe they like that reveal that she was a Palpatine. I... At that point, there were people, I guess, having theories she was a Palpatine. I didn't really get into any of that stuff. I didn't really care. Um, dynamic with Poe and Finn. There's like this tr love triangle thing they were trying to do with Poe, Finn, and Ray. And there's a moment where, you know, Ray, you know, like Finn is, like, w wants to say something to Ray, but then he doesn't. Makes you think, oh, he's going to say, I love you. But. We never get that resolution. We never get that, uh, you know, we never get 
an answer to what he wanted to say. We can only infer he wanted to say he loves her, but that's it. You can just guess that that's what he was going to say, and then nothing came from it. Um, and there's a moment with Hulu, who's the actress? Oh, this character who Poe knows, uh, played by, oh, what is her name? I, and that's the thing with these new characters, I don't know them, I, I, don't, I don't recall some of them. Like, they're just, they're there, but then they don't really leave a huge impact on you. At least not for me. Um, Carrie Russell, played Zori Bliss, she's an old acquaintance of Poe's. Yeah, and she helps out in the end. Originally she wanted, she didn't like him, but then uh, she was going to help, she decided to help them, because uh, Ray put a lightsaber to her, so you know, don't want to get killed. You know, and, and there's a moment between Poe and her, which was nice. You know, it was, it was interesting. Some uh, chemistry there. You know, despite whatever their differences were in the past seems like maybe we can uh, move past that and do something we can go off and just forget all this but Poe's like hey, hey he can't leave everybody so yeah I know I said I was gonna just stop but I'm, I'm sorry this movie I just you know again I forgot there was somebody there that was also important who also helps out at the very end Harry Russell, yeah. There's a lot of th uh, discussion who she would be. Uh, some thought she would be Mara Jade, Luke's wife, but I'm like, no, don't do that. I, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm like, don't do that. Don't insert a character there to be in here. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I would have preferred her being in this trilogy, honestly. Uh, at least the way it's turned out. Um, but, yeah. Some of the new characters are just not very memorable. Sort of forgettable. Or if you do remember, sort of like you, Carrie Russell. I remembered her, but forgot the name of her character. Uh, it's just... But then again, there isn't enough time for you to really get to even know her character uh, a bit. There's not enough time. Like, you know, Rose. I know Rose was a character who was not liked in The for in the Last Jedi. I wasn't fond of her, char that character. Just the way she was just made and how she was used. Uh, she really just... Uh, it just really bogged down that plot of that film. And with The Last Jedi there were scenes that should have been cut out and the pacing could have been better whereas this movie there needed to be scenes to be put in so the pacing would have been better because it would have helped make this not be so fast and you not being like what? you know it's just uh, it's, it was just very uh, so, one hand, I find it to be the most entertaining, this film to be the most entertaining of this trilogy, yet, I don't know, part of me thinks, in a way, it is, it's, it's just as bad as the rest of the installments. It's not good. Uh, I don't know, I guess I get another positive is, I don't know, it's just, the score was fine. John, but then John Williams always does a good job with the Star Wars scores. If it's not great, it's good. Um, you know, he does a competent job. R2 is underutilized, just as he has been this entire trilogy. Uh, they have to erase C-3PO's memory so he can give them, tell them what the what's on this, oh, that thing they're looking for to get the Sith holocron was on a dagger. He has to. Re he reads that, but then he can't say it unless you know. You have it. To you have him read it afterwards. After his uh, memory is wiped, 
And they say, oh, well, R2 doesn't have my memory in, a, in his in him to give back to me. But then he does, so uh, I guess C-3PO didn't know that. Because um, later R2 gives him his memory back. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's really all I have to say. And also, R2 was the hero of the Star Wars saga, uh, at least back when George Lucas was in charge, because he always made sure R2 had one moment where he saved the day. He saved the heroes from danger or something. But in these movies, he's sort of just there. Occasionally, he'll do something. In the beginning, he was able to get information to beam down to, like, uh, to where... Uh, Leia, Ray, and the Resistance are, uh, I believe it's the planet uh, that they ended on in Force Awakens, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, where Leia and the Resistance and everyone is, um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just so much of this film, so much happens, and you get very little time to for a scene or things to breathe because it has to go has to keep going the action seems pretty much non-stop yeah I know I'm just repeating myself now but it, this is just meh to me it's just eh as I've already said I just yeah, I, uh, it's got me talking in circles now, so. I don't really have anything else to add. Yeah, this is shorter than my other Star Wars discussions. So, at least of this trilogy, so there's a positive. Uh, it's not an hour, almost, though. Um, so, with all that, I will uh, see you all next time. I hope you're all having a great day, have a great week. Great weekend, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, have a happy holiday season, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.